Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaitya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 23rd of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about return on owner's equity. So in simple terms, return on owner's equity is a profitability matrix that is used to compare the profits earned by the company to its owner's equity. We have basically four things to discuss in this tutorial. Number one, understand what owner's equity is all about. Number two, its formula and calculations. Number three, calculate return on owner's equity of Colgate. And number four, its interpretations and uses. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder, we will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And to keep yourself updated with investment banking and financial modeling concepts, Please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is return on owner's equity? Return on owner's equity is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating profitability category. In our last video, we discussed about return on total equity. But now we will be discussing the return on owner's equity. There's a very subtle difference between the two. We'll come to that. But let me define first what return on owner's equity means. Return on owner's equity means that how much amount of net profit that you are generating on your investment from owners. Okay. So the owners, when they invest there, it's called as owner's equity or shareholder's equity. So how much amount of uh, net profit or the net income that you are generating will be the return on owner's equity. So if the return on owner's equity is, let's say, 20%, that would mean the net profit of the company is $20 when you have invested owner's equity to an extent of $100. So that's how the interpretations are. It's fairly simple, but now you need to really understand what's the difference between owner's equity and total equity. Though we did cover this in our previous video, but I'll cover this again for the sake of convenience of everyone. So uh, let's imagine that, uh, you know, when we talk about consolidated financials. So uh, just imagine a company like Colgate, which we are doing as a part of the case study. They have various subsidiaries. So not only they operate from US, but they have subsidiaries in India as well as uh, France, as well as, you know, let's say Spain and almost everywhere they have the subsidiaries, right? So when they consolidate their financials and report it to the SEC, basically they are doing is they're consolidating everything in one and all the assets and the income statement and balance sheet, everything is consolidated as well in the consolidated financial statements. Now, if you assume that the subsidiaries are like 100% owned by Colgate, then there is no issue as such. There's no difference between total equity and owner's equity. But what happens sometimes is that the subsidiary might be owned by some external investors. Okay. So when you consolidate those assets and the balance sheets, you have to consolidate fully within the income statement. Okay. But uh, a part of it is not owned by Colgate in this case, right? So that's what is called as minority. The share, the part of the share which is not owned by Colgate is called as minority shareholders. Okay. But it's owned by someone else. So when you're reporting the consolidated financials, you will find that kind of a number. So say, for example, here in this uh, uh, balance sheet, if you look at uh, that of Colgate, you'll find that when we look at the shareholders equity, we see that there is a controlling interest as well. So this is the part that is not owned by Colgate. Okay. But, and this is the amount that's owned by Colgate. So non-controlling interest is when you're consolidating all the subsidiary and the part of the subsidiary which is not owned by the parent companies is basically known as non-controlling interest. Okay, so now that you've understood uh, uh, owner's equity and uh, the non-controlling interest, okay, so when we are calculating return on owner's equity, we are saying that only consider the owner's equity. Okay, Do not consider the non-controlling interest. But when we are looking at return on total equity, you have to take the sum total of these two, like we did in our previous video. So that's how 
the difference between the two uh, lies. So let us now look at the formula for return on owner's equity. So return on owner's equity will be equal to the net income divided by the shareholder's equity or the owner's equity. So in the numerator, please remember this net income is after you have taken care of uh, the non-controlling interest. So the amount that is attributable to them needs to be deducted here first. And uh, in the shareholders equity, remember we are only talking about the owner's equity and not the minority shareholders as well. Okay, so uh, that's that's a key difference. And uh, let's calculate uh, this uh, for a hypothetical example. Let's assume that net income is, uh, let's say, 150 and uh, amount attributable to non-controlling interest is, let's say, 20. Okay. So, net income after non-controlling interest will be how much? This will come out to be 150 minus 20, that is 130. Okay. So, you have to take care of this interest, non-controlling interests first. You remove that portion and then calculate the net amount. Okay, so you can call this as after non-controlling interests are taken care of. All right. Now, uh, what about the owner's equity? Owner's equity or shareholders' equity at the start and at the end. Okay, we need both of them because we need the average numbers. Let's assume at the start it is 600 and at the end it is 1200. So we take the average of the two. This is equal to average 1200 plus 600 divided by 2. That comes out to be 900. So the return on owner's equity will be equal to 130 divided by 900. All right. So this comes out to be 14.5. 4%. Okay, so the calculation is actually fairly simple. You would not get stuck here. The only adjustment that you need to do is something like this, which will also be pretty evident in the income statement. And uh, let's look at how the return on owner's equity look like for other sectors. For comparison's sake, uh, retail, we did discuss this as well in the last video, but uh, let me do it again. Retail uh, has around 35% of return on equity. So let's say if this company was uh, in retail sector, obviously we would have known that this is a, 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 you know, a very lower amount of return on owner's equity generated from this company. So this is a bad position to look at. But if it was, let's say, utilities company, utilities usually have a return on equity of 8%. Okay, so compared to if this was a utility company, obviously 14.4% was much higher than the industry peers. So this would be a good position to look at. Other examples could be like financials. They have around 10% of return on equity. Uh, capital goods has around 20% of return on equity. So these are just the ballpark numbers. Uh, you can actually try and find out what is the return on equity on other sectors too, so that you can make a, a valuable judgment regarding your company as, as well. Let us now calculate return on owner's equity of Colgate. So for that, I have opened the balance sheet and I want you to scroll down to row number, row number 131. This is where we will calculate the return on owner's equity. So we'll be starting from 2017 because we need the average of the owner's equity number. And the formula is net income divided by owner's equity, the average owner's equity. So for this, the income statement needs to be referred because we will be look, linking it to the net income, right? So here, uh, you can see that, that there are two types of net incomes which are reported, net income including the non-controlling interest and the net income which reduces, which removes the effect of non-controlling interest, right? So here 2586 and 145 is the deduction that is done in order to find the net income that is attributable to Colgate formula shareholders. So that's the number that we are looking for. So in this 2017, we'll be taking 2024, line number 20. Okay. And the average of owner's equity. So what is the owner's equity? We just discussed uh, earlier. The owner's equity is here in row number 
44. So row number 46 includes the non-controlling interest, but this is the number that we need to take. So both of them are kind of negative because of the treasury stock. Uh, treasury stock essentially represents the amount of buyback which the company has done and Colgate has that kind of a policy of buyback every year. So uh, that's that's the reason you know the total shareholders equity or the owner's equity here has been negative. So let's see what the answer is. It comes out to be negative. So at the end of the day you can't actually interpret the negative owner's equity. It's return on owner's equity. So I guess uh, all these numbers which we are getting are just numbers you cannot have any interpretations uh, from this as such all right and uh, coming to uh, its comparisons of course uh, 626 point seven percent you can't compare because this is kind of very high it is it is very unusual uh, it is unusual because Colgate has a buyback policy and that has reduced uh, shareholders equity or the owner's equity of Colgate to a very very low base so that's the reason um, you know these numbers are cannot be compared with the industry peers as well for procter and gamble the return on owner's equity is somewhere around 27.5 percent okay so uh, i've just given this number so that you know this is how the uh, comparable company procter and gamble's uh, return on owner's equity looks like so i hope now you have understood what is return on owner's equity uh, how do you calculate it and what's its interpretations? I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section below. And we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications about our latest videos as soon as we release them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.